Alright, so this will hopefully be a pretty quick tutorial from Square Toots on uh, the developer platform for Squarespace and adding custom CSS um, to style your site beyond what the template allows. Note that you do not have to use the developer mode to style um, your custom CSS. You can do most things um, without using it, but if you want to go advanced and change the way the site dashboard looks um, or things like that, you will have to use the developer mode and it is only available on the professional and the business plans um, so you you can't get to it from uh, a regular site or a trial so this is actually a site that I worked on for a nonprofit um, that I will show you some things on so in the developer mode um, there are things auto reload basically whenever you commit a change uh, it will automatically refresh the change still on beta I still prefer keeping two browser windows open and um, refreshing the change like that which actually I'm not gonna do any changes on this site but I'll show you how we would do it uh, so any file errors that you get um, in basically anything that's in your git repository shows up here a lot of times they're not super important um, but some important things that to keep aware of um, in case you get these and your site is crashed or something if you can figure out what these are that um, will help you or whether or not you can ignore them or not um, here is some of the important advantages of the uh, developer site one you can have multiple people all developing on the same thing so on this site we have let's see Joseph me David um, I think most of us were that was a, there was a team of 12 of us working on there but we were the main developers but yeah you can track every, what everybody's committing and you can all be working on the same site um, through git which is awesome so you can find your git repository here and if you're not familiar with git there's plenty of tutorials out there but if you copy and paste to this it will bring you to git mm -hmm. oh sorry it should bring you to git but if you clone if you clone that um, url or this repository right here if you use something like I prefer git box or things like that or if you search for this um, through github see right here you can add a new repository or clone a repository and put that one in there and then you would get um, things like DAC where now so basically it downloads the Squarespace all of the backend stuff like their style sheets and the script that runs it their template files, all of the blocks, um, things like that, all of your assets that you upload. Which it's handy to be able to get to that stuff through your finder and make changes on it in a text editor and then push it up to Git rather than trying to run it all through the tiny little um, custom CSS thing that they have in the design section right here. So rather than trying to do it all through there, it's just handy to have it in text editors and things that real developers use. But again, it's not super necessary. Um, if you want to do it all through the custom CSS, you can do it like that. You can also set up your template. It gives you all of that information. It tells you what all of the pages are and what they're doing, if there's a divine view or order. Um, things like that and it tells you all of the commits that somebody makes to the repository um, and things like that so basically you get history um, it doesn't go back very far but it does get you a lot of it so that's a quick overview of the develop mode um, but most of your CSS will probably happen through the design editor which is this guy here so if you're in your dashboard you go to design custom CSS and come in through that 
um, all of your changes if you do them through a text editor push them to get push them through the developer or you do them in here you use the same type of code um, it's just where you do it and how you get it to the site this puts it directly on the site so any changes I make here won't will often happen right here in the live view I generally and it's good practice to have two screens open um, of your site or, or two browsers open with your site on it one to inspect and view changes and the other one right here because if you're doing things with margins and padding and whatnot this screen width is screwed up by this right here so that's just something to note if you're doing things that involve absolute positioning or fixed positioning or anything that involves moving stuff around through CSS you're gonna to want to look at it on how it'll actually look like and you're also going to want to look at it on how it's going to look on the mobile as well. So just a couple of things to note. Um, and this tutorial is assuming that you have some base CSS knowledge um, so that you can kind of understand the context of what I'm saying. But here's kind of how it goes. So in order, to, let's say we want to add a red background to the text in this box. We would come to the site inspect the element and I always do it when I'm not logged in um, because some of these IDs will change if you're logged in or not logged in um, generally the blocks don't but a lot of the interiors will change so if you can use a class that's preferable otherwise you want to use the block ID but inspecting your element by either two finger clicking on a Mac trackpad or right clicking. You'll also want to be in whatever browser you're in. Um, I'm in Firefox right now, but I, you can do this in Safari or wherever. Um, you want to go to where you can turn on your developer mode. I can't even remember where the heck I did it here, but it's somewhere in your settings um, that you can turn on developer mode. Maybe it's tool. Oh no, there it is. Tools, sorry. So tools, web developer mode. Um, you'll want to have your inspector on and be able to turn these things on. Um, so just make sure that you have your developer mode on in your browser. And if you don't know how to do it for your specific browser, you can Google that and there's plenty of answers. So either way, you when you right click with your mouse on something it will get you the inspector for that and then when you come down here to your inspector this will show you all of the code in your website so rather than trying to download a source code or something like that you want to use the inspector so that you can mouse through this stuff and see what you're actually looking at so if we wanted to toss a red background around that entire block we would go okay it's block div ID equals this block right here and I double click get that you always want to use block dash YUI when you're doing anything you can go more specific from there but that's at the very least what you want to start with because that's how Squarespace recognizes this thing if like if I'm doing if I wanted to do the text in here this h1 text I wouldn't do just h1 on this page what here I'd find the parent block of that page so what's the next level up or the next two levels up until I found the one with the block ID unless I wanted to do all block content so that's where you have to figure out do you want to do it all do you want to do just that one thing if you're doing just one thing like I want to add a border to one image or move just one thing to the left you're gonna to want to do it with block YUI so I'll copy that come back over to my custom CSS um, IDs use hashtags classes use um, periods and you'll have to do it notice syntax error on line one that syntax error means that I don't have the ID in front of the block and I don't have my quotes um, or my curly brackets so all CSS is enclosed in curly brackets open and closed 
Um, when you put in one, and this is something that's annoying, um, Squarespace will autofill the next one. I'm used to just doing it myself, so it annoys me, but they will autofill it. So now you have to type in whatever command rule you want. So this is the block that's over here, and I want to change the background of the block to red. Notice if I want color red, it's going to change that text red right there, which I don't want to do. I want to change the block red. And notice that it changed only this text red. It did not change the link red, and it did not change the header red. Um, I could put important. And that wouldn't matter. Normally, if you do something and it's not being overridden, you can put important on it, and that will override. Like, if this same block had color blue, and then down here, I wanted to do, or color red, and down here I wanted to do color blue, that'll work. But if I want to change it back to red up here, since it reads top down, I have to put important on it. So this is overriding everything that comes below. Normally, whatever's lowest on your style sheet takes precedence, but this um, important will override that. The reason it's not doing this, though, is because I haven't gotten specific enough. So I'm saying this block, space, whatever H1 title text is in it, now that's changing color because I've got that space in there, so it's block, space, the child that comes next. If I don't have that h1 or if I go h1 there, that's not going to work. I can do comma h1, which will change all of the h1 headers and this block. So comma means change this one thing and this other thing to do that. So change it to color blue, everything within that block, and notice how it's changing just the text. That's because color means text. Let's go back to red. If I want to change the block itself, background. Background red, that'll change the block to red. And here's an important thing to note. So on here, that purple line around it is the um, padding or, or the margin around the block itself. So there's a 20 pixel margin around, or sorry, the padding. Um, so there is on pretty much every Squarespace block, they've got padding 17 pixels all the way around it. So if I wanted to trim down and do the, um, sorry, trim down and ignore that padding and just do the text extremely tight, I would have to go this block, this class of content, this div within this block. So I could do it two ways. I could do the block ID and then the div. So notice how that's more specific, so it trimmed down where I'm not getting the padding around it. It's going specific to the block. But if I had more than one div in this block, so if I had a block that had this div and then underneath it it had an image div, it would change the background of both of them. So I could do this div with a specific block content. So if I had an image, it would say SQS block image rather than block content. But here I could go this div with class SQS block content. It's still going to keep that. It's just a little more specific. And that is pretty much the gist of how you do custom CSS. And any CSS rule applies. Um, you just have to get the specificity down and inspect the right element. So some things are kind of tough because you're not sure what's controlling what. So here H1, here's all the rules for it, but I couldn't do just H1. I would need to do H1 page title in order to change this because that's what's controlling it. So the first place to look is here and then figure out what rules are running it and what you want to change. 
see how it's overriding normal h1 and imposing all of this because it's a class page title. So I would have to do h1 class page title to do this. If I wanted to change the alignment, I would have to copy all of this or do the alignment text align center here and toss an important on it to override that. Um, if I wanted to change the letter spacing, I'd either have to toss an important on it, because notice how it's overwritten, or I'd go h1 class page title with an ID of this. Or actually, I'd do h1 with an ID of yui in order to get that specificity for just this element. Um, the background image stuff is extremely difficult to get around so you got to do parallax item but then it's got stuff on top of it with description wrappers um, so if you're changing like you can change the height of this parallax but it's a lot more difficult to do that's where it's easier to do it in places like your this is not this is settings PHP for my work but um, you would do it through the developer mode and get because you can get to their actual style sheet that generates it rather than trying to pick through the inspector to find it if you had the developer mode but you can do pretty much anything um, as long as you get the inspector to find the specificity of it and then come over here make sure you have hashtag for divs class for ID know what you want to change and do all that so you can do a bunch of different custom things um, I haven't done anything real crazy in here but you can change your font family for different cases you can change your list item stuff um, to get rid of bullet points for your lists that's something that you can't do in the regular design thing um, you can, if you have jQuery going on, you can do CS3 animations. Uh, pretty much anything that you can do regular CSS, you can do here. You just have to find the right selector to hook into.